In today's video, I'll walk you through the process I use to write research papers in both nursing and nurse practitioner school. Now, I am by no means a paper writing expert. If you've been around a while, you know my absolute disdain for like writing papers and re like, doing all of those theory research classes, but nursing really seems to love writing papers. So finding a way to simplify them and just get through them efficiently is a must, and that is what we'll be doing today. We'll talk about how I approached papers, picked topics, gathered and organized the information, as well as get some editing tips from my sister who actually does editing for her job and edited all my papers in school. Thanks, Rachel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner and have written more papers than I could like, possibly even imagine between NP school, my accelerated BSN, and then my original degree in psychology, which also loved papers. And the goal today is for you to learn some tips that I wish I had known way back when, when I first started writing papers over a decade ago for college. Before we dive into this whole thing, I wanted to take a second to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and briefly tell you what they do and how their online platform with over 7 million members might benefit you. In case you haven't heard of them, Skillshare is a subscription service where for an annual subscription of less than $10 a month, you get access to their over 25,000 videos aimed to provide education on business, crafty creative things, and even some on learning how to write papers. One cool example of a video I watched and thought would be helpful for something like this was called creative nonfiction, write truth with style. And in this video, the author talks you through how to write informatively, but in a way that actually captures your attention. She pretty much just walks you through the steps that she goes through in order to create a story out of the information that you have. If that sounds good to you and you're interested in checking out Skillshare for yourself, you can use the link at the top of my description box to get two months for free. So whether you want to feel your curiosity, creativity, or paper writing skills, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. Now, let's dive into this paper writing. First, blanket statement. Now, I am bad at this, like really, really bad, but try not to save your paper until the very last minute. I am a professional procrastinator, and I'm telling you, I noticed my grades magically going up when I finally started working on papers sooner rather than waiting till the absolute mass last minute. So don't let it wait until like the weekend before it is due, you know, that, like that Monday. Give yourself like at least two weekends, and you'll be fine unless it's your thesis. Give yourself, give yourself longer for your thesis. Been there, done that. You need more than, you need some time. All right, now that my mom lecture is out of the way, let's talk about my general approach to research papers. So in order to do some research on this whole topic, some of you very kindly emailed me some recent rubrics and papers you've written, so I use that kind of as a mold of how to present this video. We're gonna walk through writing a paper based on some of the ones that you guys sent me, but I'm gonna simplify it a bunch just for the sake of the video and so that we can make it a little bit more fun. Because for the life of me, I could not figure out how to make an actual nursing paper fun. And this topic just needs some fun injected into it. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick a topic which is very overwhelming. So for the sake of our imaginary paper, we're gonna say it needs to be on an animal and it needs to be on improving outcomes in an animal. And these outcomes need to be something that I can implement in my own home. So there's our general paper instructions. Super broad topic, right? Most of the papers you write in nursing and NP school are going to have similarly very broad instructions. And here is kind of how I narrowed it down. First, find something that mildly interests you like literally any topic within this scope that seems like I could maybe talk about that for a minute. And I recommend in this instance that you pick either a population or a problem because going at both at the same time is too overwhelming. For example, you could pick patients with type one diabetes, elderly people, teenagers, breast cancer, pick either a population or a problem and then be very proud because you've just accomplished step one. For me, since I'm writing about an animal, I am interested in my dog, Holly, who is here snoring on my floor and I can't get her to move. She's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So I will write about Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. That gives me one of the two, population or a problem. I chose population, we're golden. Next, you need to find a problem with your population or a population for your problem, however you're approaching this. This, again, should be something that mildly interests you or at least that you're a little bit familiar with. Since I already have my population, Holly, I need a problem. So I know that Holly's breed tends to struggle from consequences of being a bit overweight because Cavaliers really enjoy naps and food and might be the laziest dogs I've ever met. This is like her fourth nap today. 
it's 1 p.m. Now, once you have a general idea of what your population and problem are, I recommend just doing some preliminary research on the topic. While you're going through and doing some very quick overview research, make sure that there's recent data and research articles on this topic you have chosen. And in a few minutes, I'll go more in detail on how I do all my research and all of that, so just hang with me. But this is such an important step because you need to know, one, is there even information out there about Cavalier King Charles and reducing mortality due to complications from obesity? And two, is the topic too broad? Meaning there is way too much information because both of these things are problematic. Not enough information, that's obviously a huge issue. And if there's way too much information available, that's also problematic because you're, the amount of information available to you is going to be insanely overwhelming. And narrowing it down a little in either the population or the problem department is going to make you able to write a much more focused research paper where you are not totally overwhelmed by insane amounts of information you're never gonna be able to get through. It's also gonna be more interesting if your information is a little bit more targeted. So you have to find that sweet spot between narrow enough but still broad enough that you can like find research papers and you're not writing you know because you, you need multiple sources you can't just have two so if you are going through this and you're having the opposite problem where you're going where you're looking and there just doesn't seem to be any information out there for you on your topic loosen one of your parameters maybe you were thinking about doing it in just ruby which is her fur color cavaliers and you're going to need to broaden it up to a bigger population of all Cavalier King Charles. So either way, if you're too broad or too narrow, just play with the parameters of your population and your problem, making them more or less specific, and that's gonna help you find a really good topic. Another idea is to run the idea by your professor. Now, now some professors will require this. They want you to you know, present the topic to them. I did this a ton in grad school, even when it wasn't required, because they've seen all these papers, and they're usually pretty good at being able to tell you like, yeah, this is a great topic. I think there's plenty of information, or, hey, you need to narrow that down or girl, you're gonna have to like open this thing wide up and broaden your search a little bit. Fortunately for me in our hypothetical situation, I have looked into my topic and I am like in that sweet spot with just enough information to make it interesting but not too much to be overwhelmed. As a reminder for my paper, we will be examining what techniques I could employ at home to reduce a Cavalier King Charles chance of adverse events related to breed tendencies of extreme laziness. And bam, there's your topic. You can kind of tweak that a little bit to make your thesis statement. Your thesis statement is usually a point you are trying to prove. So maybe my thesis statement would be through interventions at home, including X, Y, and Z, I can you know, reduce mortality in my Cavalier King Charles. But you have the general idea now, so you're golden. You're gonna to wanna to write your topic or your thesis statement, whatever it is, on a sticky note and slap that puppy above your computer so that you can reference it all the time until it's so ingrained in your brain you like see it in your sleep. That way it's really easy to reference as you're researching and getting all your information and you can constantly be directed back to your goal of like, okay, yeah, this is what I need to do. This is what I'm trying to prove. Because if you're like me, you kind of, your brain, sometimes you get into the rabbit hole of the paper and you're like, what am I even talking about here? Just put it above your computer as a reminder. Now that we have our topic, let's look at what this paper requires. You should have a few things to help you with this. You should have some kind of assignment guidelines, print those out. I like to have those sitting right next to my computer or also like taped up on my wall where I could look at them really easily without having to like switch through the tabs on the computer and whatever. Having them right there was very helpful. And then you're going to want to find and print the rubric. The rubric doesn't usually tell you exactly what type of information they want out of this paper, but the rubric does specify exactly how much information they want, how deep they want you to go into this when you are writing about the items that are listed in the guideline. Both of these are going to act as your guide and roadmap to writing this whole paper. So that's why I like to print both of them out, stick them above your computer and you're golden. Now you're going to want to grab your journal, your binder, your iPad, whatever it is you will be taking notes on. Warning, this method I'm about to talk about might seem excessive, but I promise it works really, really well. And it actually made paper writing a lot easier for me once I figured this out. I used to do this on actual paper, so that's the route we're gonna go with today. But like I said, whatever you usually write notes in is totally fine. So this process starts the actual kind of paper writing or at least accumulation of information. And the very first step of that is getting organized. So I looked at my paper guidelines and then wrote down the main topics of things that I needed to address on the top of my piece of paper each piece of paper got a different topic. So let me explain. My paper guidelines tell me that in my introduction, I need to explain the purpose of my paper. So on my first piece of paper, I would write introduction, paper purpose. 
I would also write down any additional requirements that the guidelines and rubric wanted for this section. And then I would draw a line under that. And under that line is where I bullet point all of my information I'm gonna talk about right here. So in my guidelines, it told me for my paper purpose, this paragraph needed to include my thesis. So this is kind of what my paper would look like. You can see my title is up here. <laughs> My description is right there and then all the info goes down here. Next on the guidelines it says my paper needs to address the history of the problem and more specifically it tells me I need to while I'm doing this address the breed, why this is a problem, how long it's been a problem, and why it would be beneficial to fix it. So each of those sub problems are going to get their own page with the topic at the top, the line, and all the information below it. That might seem excessive. You're like, why do they all need their own page? Because doing it this way, when you want to add more information, you're never out of room. Rather than doing this one, oh, okay, next topic right below it. And then you're like, arrows become involved when you're out of room and you're moving things places. And that gets really confusing. And organization here is going to be so helpful in compiling your final paper. Keep in mind here that when you get further into your paper, topics that have a ton of information, so some of your main points may require like, front and back paper. Usually I would do like one topic on the front, one topic on the back, but they might need both. Another really cool thing about doing it this way is if this is how you're organizing all your information in your whole paper, it's so easy to move where that placement is. So say you decided like, ooh, I actually don't wanna talk about this here. I wanna talk about this way later, like almost by my conclusion, pull that paper out, put it in order down there at the bottom, wherever you wanna sneak it in. Cause this is kind of your outline at the same time as it is your information organizer. So I just wanna go over it one more time in case it wasn't clear. All of the information you are going to be gathering for your paper is going to go under these headings. The whole, all the information for the whole paper. This is how we're gonna organize it. This is my outline. Formal outlines for me weren't really helpful. It didn't help me visualize my paper. If they do for you, that's perfect. This is just what really worked for me. And having them on the individual papers allowed mobility as well as organization. Now, don't go writing in the details of the information yet. Literally all you're doing right now is going through and writing all your headings out for the whole paper. So going back to my paper, I might have three pages for the background of the problem. And then I have interventions I'm researching, which are diet, exercise, exercise and playtime and each of those have some of their own subheadings because we're going to talk about specific interventions within those so all of those get their own page and don't forget while you're setting all of this up you also want to create a reference page now when i am going through and writing down all the information i find you're obviously gonna to wanna to remember where you got the info for um, so you can reference it in your real paper. But I didn't write out the whole like, you know, Brown et al, 2019, every single time. The first one I came across, like the first reference I ever found became one. I wrote the whole reference out, how I was going to present it in my paper on my reference page. And next to it, I wrote in parentheses, one. And I just put on my information sheet, one, after all the information I wrote. Second one I came across, you know, wrote the whole thing out on my reference sheet too. I did not alphabetize this part. You can do that way later. But you do want to attribute the information you are writing down on these pages to a reference sheet and numbering it just made it so much easier. Okay, so now you have like 20 papers and then your reference sheet. And guys, congratulations. You have just literally done the hardest part of your paper the organizing of it. From here, all you have to do is go and gather the information and fill everything out. But you already know what your paper's gonna kinda look like because you got the structure. So take a minute, go take a little rest, pat yourself on the back because you're doing an awesome job. All right, break's over. Now we need to go find the information and fill all this stuff out. So where do you find research information for these types of papers? There's a few different options. So your school has probably given you access to the online library. Some common databases for nurses and healthcare professionals that you can search through are CINAHL, PubMed, or you can just search in any of the well-known nursing or medical journals in your field. And you can just Google comment like medical journals in whatever type of thing you're looking for and it'll tell you what those are. For me personally in NP school I used a lot of American Family Physicians, a lot of JAMA, AANP, but it'll kind of depend on what field you are specifically in. Again you can just google that and it'll tell you the common journals in your area. I also used Google Scholar a ton. So you do, can just type into your Google search bar Google Scholar and it is a search engine that you can then specify on the left hand side the date ranges that you want your information to be between. Make sure to mark off that you only want peer-reviewed journals. And if you have logged into your school's library recently, you can open pretty much 
any of the journal articles that pop up there. If you haven't logged in recently, sometimes you can only see like the abstract, which is kind of annoying, but I'm usually when you're in school and you've logged into your school's email recently, it magically gives you access. To, it like recognizes that you have access through your school through some internet magic and you have access to all the articles. So this is a really great option and one I found to be super user friendly because sometimes the library databases were kind of hard to use. But they do, most of your schools will have like either online library support or just go chat with the librarian for a minute and they can walk you through how to use the search functions to know like and or or, or all those other weird nuances that help you find information go give them a minute. They're usually very sweet and very helpful. Another fun trick I learned for getting information was go to the bottom of the research article that you found and you're like, oh, this is so great. And at the very bottom, you'll see the references. See if any of those are within your time frame and could be used as another article. Like maybe they touched on this topic and you wanna learn more, use those. Again, just be very careful of the date range because sometimes that's a little bit older, but excellent way to find some new articles without having to search twice. Side note, huge thing to remember when you are writing papers here, at least in my experience, we had to use primary sources. So that meant we could not use things like up to date. If we wanted to cite something, like we found the information on up to date, we had to go figure out where up to date got the information and cite that original research article. So your school maybe is probably like that. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. You cannot cite these secondary sources that gather all the info. You need to go to the actual source Otherwise they won't be happy with you. So that's basically how I research. Now you are going to go through and get to Googling and fill out all of these sheets that you have made. Keep going and researching on each topic until you can look up under the description of what you needed to hit, like three subheadings or like hit this amount of specificity when describing this topic. And you're like, yep, I feel like I've accomplished that. I can move on to the next page. And remember, this doesn't have to be in perfect order. You might be researching something in the background and then you realize, oh, that has great info I could put in this other section that I remember I made way back here, go jot something down over there. You know, you can jump around kind of where you're placing your information, which is another cool aspect of having all those different sheets is you're not really stuck to a linear outline. You can kind of like throw your information all over as you see it. And then it all just kind of like comes together really nicely and it's beautiful and well-rounded and oh, so nice. Okay, so now it's like 20 hours later. You filled all of that in with so much good information. You could, if you wanted, I suppose, at this point, make an outline. I personally didn't. I usually just went straight from all these bullet points on the paper to writing it into a paper form. I would organize my papers how I wanted them to show up in my paper in order, you know. I would read through the whole page to kind of familiarize myself again with all the information that was there. And that would help me in my mind figure out how I wanted to kind of type this out and turn these bullet points into words. Most of my bullet points were already pretty wordy, so I could just kind of like copy and paste them into a paper and add some ands and ors and fancy other words that papers like with some transitions and um, bam, paper. Now. I say that, but this first round, guys, it doesn't have to be beautiful, okay? This first round where we're just kind of like getting all the information into word form, we, that's all we need from it, is we just need it to get into word form. It doesn't have to be beautiful yet. Now, after you've finished, you're going to go through and read it a few times, read it out loud. You wanna make it flow better, you know, add those transitions, make sure things make sense where they are and that you've fully addressed each problem. And it doesn't sound like a caveman, it's just rattling off data. Also, while you're going to do this, you are going to want to remember to replace all those bracketed numbers with the actual references. I believe there is a function in most word processors where you can go in and you can say, replace every numerical number one with this and enter the phrase and you could enter actually the reference and you could just hit enter and it would do it like all of it for you. I don't know how to do wizardry on the computer like that, but you can Google that and you might be able to figure it out and that would save you a ton of time. If not, just go through the whole paper, you know, command F, that'll tell you where all the ones are and then command F2 and I'll tell you where all the twos are and make sure to replace those with the actual references as well as alphabetizing your actual reference list now and make that look pretty. And then bam, you guys are done, like except for editing, but all the information's out there. You did it. So let's talk about editing for a second. I recommend proofreading and editing on a different day than you wrote your paper because writing this paper is kind of like giving birth and I've given birth and my friends, you are not objective after you have given birth. You will think this thing is the most beautiful, gorgeous, well-written essay baby you've ever seen. And then in a few months, you'll go back and read it and you'll be like, 
just kind of had a weird cone head and like looked real squished and weird and maybe she wasn't so cute and beautiful. You need some objectivity, so do it like the next day, two days later. Again, this is why a good idea of starting a little bit earlier is a good idea, but I would highly recommend you look at your essay a different day. That way you don't think your alien essay baby is some beautiful thing when really it does need a little bit of tweaking and maturity. I also really recommend having someone else read it. So like I had mentioned earlier, I actually had my sister edit all of my papers because that's just not something I'm good at. I am like, I can gather the information and do that, but I am not good at grammar and making things sound lovely. But that is what she does for a living as an editor. So she would help me out there and she does an awesome job. My teachers all throughout school, they're all like, oh my gosh, this is like so well written and like the grammar and blah, 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 like so well done. And I was like, yeah, thank you. I don't have any of those skills. So if you are like me and need some editing help, but aren't fortunate enough to be related to an editor, I asked her if she would be willing to work with people, AKA you on editing papers and she said sure because she's crazy and she enjoys that type of work so if you are looking to hire an editor for just some final tweaks and recommendations on any of your scholarly paper email her i will leave her information down below and she can help you make it beautiful honestly guys huge lifesaver if that is not your strong suit highly recommend especially for more like grad school stuff when they really care about how it looks like it's helpful. Also, if you guys are looking for just some basic editing tips, she did make a whole article for me where she listed out her biggest, I think it's like five or six main tips that she sees like people make mistakes in. I was gonna include it in this video, but it was like way too, first this video is too long. And then her tips, I couldn't condense them without like chopping out a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to leave a link to my website where I wrote it as like a blog article with all of her tips for writing, a, like helping polish off your paper. She goes through how to like make your transitions better, how to organize a paper so it flows and makes the most sense. And then something called a modifier. I don't know, she explains whatever that is very well in her paper. I was like, I don't even know what that is. Yikes, probably need to take like grammar 101 all over again. But again, if you need just some basic editing help, that's not my jam, that's hers. Go check out that link in my description box if you wanna see her article on all those good things. Maybe one day I'll have her on here and we can do a whole video on writing editing papers. We'd also probably get very sidetracked. We're both chatty. It's a genetic problem. Um, but let me know if that would be fun. And there you have it. Like I said, don't procrastinate too, too much. It just gets really stressful at the end. And if you have a little bit of time to give it some space and let it breathe, you'll look at each other much more objectively and your outcome will be better. I hope this video made paper writing seem a little bit more feasible. I know it's super overwhelming and daunting. At least it was for me. If this video was helpful, I would love for you to subscribe. I have new content videos, usually on nursing and NP things every Tuesday. And on Saturdays, I have a vlog documenting my life in and out of work as a family nurse practitioner. Also head over to Instagram where I post what I'm doing and seeing at work, some daily life stuff with my kid, my, more of my dog who did move over to that other corner to snore, so that's convenient. We can message, it's a good time. Question of the day, are you a paper writing human or no? I think you can solidly guess I am not a paper writing human and my thesis nearly killed me, like really almost did me in. But let that serve as a testimony to you that if I can do this, if I can write papers and you know, write that giant enormous paper, you can do it. I, I absolutely promise if I can do it, you can do it. Hope you have a great rest of your day guys and I will see you next time. Bye.